Hello and welcome back to my D&D dungeon or my DDD. Today we're going to be doing some Q&A about the TTRPG TT. So some TTRPG TT QA. Dang. Well, one of the questions I got was about drinks getting spilled into the table. I do actually have a rubberized piece underneath the edge of the glass. Um, I considered using caulking silicone to actually seal it. Um, but I figure at some point the TV is going to break and I'm going to have to replace it. So I wanted to make it pretty easy to replace. So the glass is just sitting in there. But it should be fairly watertight. Uh, I'm, as long as nobody pours their whole drink into it, it should be okay. Um, the other questions I got were about the TV itself. Um, I went with the cheapest thing I could find, which was somebody was selling it around the corner for 100 bucks, And if I was going to buy a new TV, I would definitely get the brightest, thinnest LCD TV you could get. Um, and when this one breaks, that's probably what I'll do. Well, the question I probably got the most is, why did I use this big desktop computer instead of a laptop or a Raspberry Pi? Those would probably be better options. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Unix, and I haven't used it very much, so that's kind of why I avoided the Raspberry Pi. And the laptop is just more expensive. If I was already using a laptop for my gaming, I would have plugged that in there. But when I am the GM, I actually don't use a screen at all. Everything's on paper, um, and then this screen is just for the players to look at. So I load up all the maps ahead of time, make sure they're in an order that I can just click through them, and then I can use the mouse to move the maps around. But I do everything pretty old-fashioned, um, which is surprising, I know, for having such a ridiculous table. Um, but it works out pretty well for me that I don't actually need a secondary screen. Would it be a good idea to add one in? Yeah, definitely. And if that's the way you are running your games, you're going to need that extra screen. I do recommend using a laptop instead of, you know, a full-size desktop, because then you can use the laptop screen as your secondary GM screen. Somebody asked about making the TV into a touch screen. Man, would that be cool. And if I do get back to working on this project again, that is something I would love to do. Um, they do make full-size infrared 55-inch touchscreen adapters, and I've heard that they work okay. Um, but as of right now, uh, I just don't have any spare time to throw into that, so I haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, somebody also recommended that you disassemble the whole TV and then move the screen flush up against the glass. That's a pretty good idea. So again, if I get back into the table, that's something I might want to add in. Uh, one comment I got was that my curtains were too short. Okay. One of the other questions I got a lot of was, will you build me one? Uh, short answer, no. Uh, long answer, uh, once I build something, I have this problem where I kind of lose interest in that type of project. I like discovering new things. I don't really like refining things I've already done, unfortunately. So a lot of times after I've done a certain type of project, I'm ready to move on and do something completely different. Um, that's not to say that it's impossible that I would build more of these in the future, um, but it's really not my main business plan. And for the last part of this video, I am going to show you more detail about these dice towers. I know that the way they were put together in the video didn't show a lot of detail, so I'm going to go back and analyze them a little bit more. Also, if I were to build these again, I'd probably do it differently. So I'm going to show you what I did do, and then I'm going to show you what I probably would do if I had to build them again. So the dice towers are mainly operated by these very short 9-inch drawer slides. You can special order them from Amazon or any place that sells cabinet hardware. Um, and those are basically one on each side, just like a regular drawer, except vertical instead of horizontal. So here we are looking at the underneath of the dice towers. There are three aluminum bars. One of them is holding the little magnet locks that both lift and hold the dice tower in place when it's down. Uh, the other two are holding the drawer sliders. These are little 9-inch sliders that you can order, uh, and that's what moves the dice tower up and down. When you push it back down, the when you push it back down, the drawer sliders allow it to fall into place. And these little buttons, there's one on each side. The other one's kind of hidden from view, but there's two of them to help lift it evenly. Also, one doesn't have quite enough force. This is a little bit fiddly, took me some time, I think I mentioned that in the video, to put this together and have it not uh, be cockeyed or, or not work every single time. So I had to adjust it, play with it a little bit, so I think if I were to do it again, I'd, I'd probably do a slightly different design. So if I were to start again today, I would probably try to build an entire enclosed box, which is mounted underneath of the table, and then instead of these drawer sliders, I would probably put some kind of ball bearings 
that would roll down the wooden surface. Um, this would be a little more enclosed on the underside, and I think it would be easier to make it settle more even. Um, I had to do a lot of adjustment to get this flat, and it, there's still a tiny bit of a lip that doesn't show up in the video, so I'm not super happy with that. But I think it would be easier to make it sit flat if there was a completely flat surface on the bottom of the box, and the dice tower would settle on that versus being uh, held by two corners. The problem with that new design is not 100% sure how I would add in the pop-up feature. I would maybe have to have the entire bottom surface move up and down with some of those clickers, but I uh, haven't thought it all the way through yet. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to watch and comment on my video. I very much appreciate it. And if there's any questions I missed, don't be afraid to ask them. Also, please comment what you want to see me build next. Because while it may appear from this video that all I do is Dungeons & Dragons, I'm actually involved in a lot of other hobbies, from cosplay to building full-size vehicles and regular garage things, um, and really pretty much anything nerdy. Uh, I'm interested in building it in the physical world. So if you've got an idea or something you'd like to see, I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching, and stay nerdy, my friends.